I want to chat about why I am no longer buying any luxury purses. I always had three reasons that justified why I would spend so much money on luxury bags. The first... Bonjour, Maza, me and bienvenue to a, I was gonna say sit down, but I'm definitely standing up. <laughs> Be of a new to a luxury chat. Say moi, Jesse, your resident Francophile, and here on Cappuccinos and Consignment, I focus on lifestyle, travel, and finance. Si vous plaît, take a moment to like, subscribe, follow along avec moi. <laughs> follow me over on Insta. I have a blog and TikTok. <sighs> yeah. Love you. Mean it. <laughs> I want to chat about why I am no longer buying any luxury purses. <laughs> I feel like, don't, don't quote me on this, okay? This is how I'm feeling at 6.36 <laughs> p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is how I'm feeling today. No, but truly, this is how I have been feeling for quite some time. And Vintage Mezzami have picked up on that. You all really have. And that's what I absolutely love about this community that I feel like we know one another. There are Mezzami that I engage with quite often via comments. And you all have noticed that I have not purchased any purses. If you are new here, I am in Paris like every month, every other month or so. I just got back and I'm sure I'll be heading back soon. But there was a span in time where every single time I was in Paris, I was making like a big ticket purchase. And that's for several reasons. So here, let, let's get into a little story time, if you will. <laughs> Here's the thing with my choices of luxury pieces. Every luxury bag that I own is a bag that I have wanted before I could ever afford luxury goods. If you are new here, I feel like I say that so often, but I have to remember that not everyone is a vintage mezzanine. This could very well be your first time watching one of my vlogs. And for that, merci. <laughs> if you are new here, I um had very humble beginnings. Growing up, just did not have a life of luxury in a sense of tangible goods. I was raised well. My beloved, dearly, recently departed my mare instilled so many things in me that money could not buy because of her i am the woman i am today and i am forever grateful and i cannot put a price tag on that so with that when i say that i did not grow up i'm wealthy that's that's financially speaking i grew up wealthy and surrounded by abundance and love and and nurture and that's actually priceless truly okay but Circling back, as a little girl, I knew these were things that I always wanted as a small child when I would get money to go to the thrift store, like my grandma or my mayor would give me about a dollar or two. And I would use that dollar or two to buy vintage fashion magazines instead of buying toys, like they would give me money to get little trinkets. But I would find vintage Vogue's, Bazaar, Town and Countries, Architectural Digest, all of those things as a little girl. And I saw items that, of course, I had no clue how much they cost. But I remember seeing women dress the part, traveling with their luxury goods, traveling with these bags that had letters all on them. Now I know, LV. <laughs> A lot of what I have now, I wanted since I was a child. For the most part, I have a very classic style. It's very easy to identify things that are Jesse, and you all do that. I get so many messages from as me like, oh my God, I saw this dress. This is so Jesse, because I really do have a classic Jesse style. With having such a strong sense of self. I'm not a trendy person. Everything that I buy for the most part is timeless. These LV pieces, you don't know when they came out. This one, I can tell you, is from the 70s, I want to say, but I have pieces that were purchased up until last year. With those classic and timeless pieces, they are meant to last a lifetime. And while being in Paris so frequently, and I went through a stretch where I was buying bags every single time I was there, that 
again was because these are pieces that I already wanted. Everything in my collection outside of my Fendi Sunshine Shopper, which I purchased as like my woo <laughs> when I gave a lecture at a French university. So that was like the only, I'd say trendy piece that I purchased, but it's not trendy to me. I will wear that bag for the rest of my life. And I plan to pass it to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> With all of that, for the Mazumi who have inquired as to why I have not made any purchases as of late, I have made purchases, but they just weren't bags. And I stopped unboxing quite some time ago. That was for several reasons. One, how it was affecting me. I felt myself over consuming because I wanted to always have something to unbox. Things that I may not have necessarily wanted, but I felt going through my timeline, oh wow, I haven't unboxed anything in some time. I need to hurry up and whip up an unboxing. And that's really not me. I am not an over consumer. For the most part, I wear the same few pieces. So that was very, very outside of my norm. So I had to reel that back. The other component that made me stop doing unboxings was how I felt that it was affecting my community. So much of cappuccinos and consignment is based on personal finance. I am not a personal finance advisor, but I am very, very good with money. Vintage Maz and me are well aware, I share this often, how less than 10 years ago, I was earning less than $19,000 as a single mom and no one knew. When I started sharing my story, loved ones, family members, friends could not believe that I was actually poor, like federally guidelines. I was in poverty. I was living in poverty, but no one would have ever known because I was so good with my money, so good with the choices that I made. And we always dressed really, really nice. And I have so many blogs on how I used to source for quality pieces. I still do. I still use those things to this day. So well, a lot of Mazami who have come here started following me from like the financial tips. And I will never forget getting a message from a Mazami that really broke my heart. She shared with me that she was saving for, I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember all the details, but either she was saving for a car or a home or paying off debt. And she had been doing so well. She would message me, checking in, let, letting me know that she's reached this milestone. But then one day she messaged me and said, you are going to be so disappointed in me. I spent my savings and went and bought a never full. And that really broke my heart. It broke my heart for more reasons than one. The pressure of social media. There is so much pressure as a consumer on social media. Just watching social media affects you more than you actually realize. But imagine being in front of the camera and feeling the pressure of always having to have something new, never rewearing the same things. It's so much pressure. I just made a conscious decision that I did not want to participate in that. There's still so many unboxings. I still watch them. I enjoy unboxings. They really do make me happy watching them, but I no longer want to record them. I did one recently solely because it was a surprise unboxing. I gave a dear friend of mine my credit card because I really wanted a neutral bag, but I could not make a decision. So gave her my credit card. And when the box arrived, I had no clue what was inside. So I did record that because that was different. I won't say that I will never do unboxings because there are some like special things I, I may feel different about and I would want to record. But for the most part, I don't record unboxings anymore. You just see me wearing things and it's like, oh, is that new? Yeah, so that's how it is. So with that, I have purchased things from Paris. I just have not done unboxing, unboxings and they haven't been purses. My focus is in other places right now. What has gotten me to the point where I feel that I am done with luxury? I don't wanna say luxury goods, cause that's a lie. I know that's a lie. But what has gotten me to a place that I am done with luxury bags? There are three parts. I know that's six, but it's three. <laughs> it's three folds. I always had three reasons that justified why I would spend so much money on luxury bags. The first reason was the quality. 
there was a point in time when luxury goods equated to quality. That is not the case now. We have chatted about this in my book club, and this is why I most recently had this conversation. In my book club, we have been going so, so deep into the luxury community, the luxury business, the just everything. Like we have gone so, so deep into this space and the lie detector test determined that <laughs> spending a lot of money does not equate to luxury and i saw that change so even with my luxury collection a lot of my pieces are vintage and that's for several reasons one being i have a fashion design degree i am not just a fashion girly i went to fashion school. I can make patterns. I can sew. I can do sourcing and production. I can draw technical specs. I know my stuff. So when I look at pieces, I'm not just looking at the aesthetics. I'm looking at construction, which is a reason too why I have a closet full, but I wear so little because just being in different spaces over consuming I have purchased a lot of things that were not quality. With all of my design knowledge, I know the quality of vintage goods surpasses anything that is made today. And that's really, really sad. I look back at some of my vintage pieces. I still have a coat from my grandmare from the 40s that is in pristine condition. She used to get the lining replaced every few years, but the coat itself, the bones, everything about it is still stunning. As I shared the date on this bag, 1970. And I will say, seeing as though this is a keep all, it's a travel bag, it's not used as much as purses, but still, from the 70s and it still looks this good any imperfections that this bag had i caused it because i do not baby my bags so that was my first reason was that the quality i believe in quality over quantity so when i first started my luxury collection i only had one bag but it was okay with me because i wore that bag every single day and i knew that it would stand the test of time because i do not baby my bags so that was my first reason the second reason is based off of many of the points i made in point one was the quality and that there was a time when you pretty much had a lifetime guarantee on your bags if you purchase certain designers at any point you could take it in for repair you can get things serviced you can get it fixed rehabbed refreshed are you okay point in time when you invested spent this much money on luxury goods you could always take the bag back for repairs that is not the case anymore so many luxury brands have put very strict timelines as to when they would repair your bag for free and to me that's just unacceptable if you are spending now eight nine thousand dollars on a bag to not be able to get it repaired for free is a problem. I most recently, a Neverfold that was purchased brand new, a few years later started having issues. The glazing inside the pocket started peeling. So whenever I would take things in and out, I would have plastic on my hands. So I took it to LV to get it repaired. They repaired the grommet for free, but told me I would have to pay for the glazing inside the bag. I, I thought that was ridiculous. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> but I thought that was absolutely ridiculous to have to pay for a bag that was still relatively new considering I have some from the 70s and cost that much. That was the second reason. The third reason why I purchase luxury goods is the flex factor. Like, let's just put it out there. I am not team quiet luxury. Do I enjoy quiet luxury? Absolutely. I have so many designer pieces that you would not know they were a designer because they don't bear logos. But I love logos. Logos. I grew up in that era with the MCM, with the LV, with the Fendi. That is my thing. I absolutely love logos. And it is the flex pour moi. There is nothing that I love more. I mean, there's things that I love more, but you get what I'm saying. I absolutely love trotting through the airport with my LV luggage, my Dior book tote, my LV passport cover. I love those things. I absolutely love it. I have gotten so many ridiculous comments about how it's so tacky. I look poor, blah, blah, blah. 
I don't care what you think how I look. I love the way I look and that's all that matters. So when I started thinking about my top three reasons for buying luxury goods, at this point, it's only the flex factor because it's not the quality and it's not the lifetime guarantee that you once had when you purchased luxury goods. So it's leaving me in a space where actually now that I think about it, there was a fourth reason. Maybe that was three. I can't remember. Going back to my fashion design degree and all, I also justified buying luxury goods because of where they were made. Certain designers were always made in Europe, always made by skilled craftsmen, always made by people who had health insurance, who had leave, more leave than me, <laughs> who had retirement plans. It that's not always the case now and a lot of brands will dispute where their pieces are being manufactured and i am not here to expose anyone like that's just not my thing but i can tell you so many of these high-end luxury designers the pieces are not being made in Italy anymore. The pieces are not being made in France. Pieces are not being made where historically they once were and I just cannot, it just does not sit well with me knowing that I am spending sometimes four and five thousand dollars for a bag where the worker was paid two dollars and fifty cents for their for their time, for their effort. It just does not sit well with me. So so much has changed in the quote unquote luxury world that I, I just had to pump the brakes. I'm not gonna say I feel like I did say I'm not buying anymore. Let's retract that. <laughs> I'm just saying right now where I am, I just can't justify spending these prices on pieces that just are not quality. I should not have issues with my bags. My Dior bag that I purchased in Paris a few days later, I had to take it to be repaired. A part of the letter, the embroidery was coming out. And once I looked at it, I saw technically how that could have happened. That wasn't a quality control issue. It's just each letter on the Dior tote is um, embroidered individually. So it doesn't connect to another piece. So it can unravel like that happens. And again, having such a vast background in design and construction, I understood that, but it still was just unsettling. Like I just spent thousands of dollars on this bag and I'm already sending it in for what felt like repair. So we, Mazami, that's where I am right now. There are, there are pieces that I still want that I know at some point I will get. And if you can guess any of those, leave them in the comments below. I'm just not interested in it right now i mean and that could change who knows the next time i'm in paris something could just take my breath away and i'll have to delete this video <laughs> i'm kidding no i i don't i don't think i've ever deleted a video i want to document my journey like that's that's one thing i don't know this is random that's one thing that's so important to me is, is documenting my journey because there will be a point where i have my tv show where i have those things and i'll look back at these videos like yuck <laughs> But until then, we are going to keep rocking with my horrible lighting and questionable sound. And I appreciate you all so much for being here avec moi. So that's really it. I just felt like I should address the designer luxury elephants in the chambre. <laughs> so until the next vlog, <laughs> ciao for now.